over the weekend, JSU added some beef to that D line, a D line that is looking to have an even better season in 2022 than they had in 2021. And we're going to talk about what that added size can do for them this fall, right after the month. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? My name is Jeff Lightsey Jr. here with the Black Boss Channel with Victor Formation. Thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, and notification bell because we upload every single day. Now, JSU Coach Prime added some much-needed presence, much-needed size on that defensive line with the commitment of Daryl Middleton. Daryl Middleton was a former defensive lineman at the University of Tennessee and at the at West Virginia. He is now coming to JSU after originally committing to Alabama A&M. So J Jackson State did two things here that will help them in the long run. One, they stole a recruit from Alabama A&M. <laughs> Alabama A&M, who I think is, is not getting talked about enough, has a really good team coming into this year. They just have to figure out the quarterback situation, whether it's going to be Quincy Casey or Jaron Williams or, you know, one of those guys who's going to win the quarterback battle there in Huntsville. I think they can have a really good team. But losing Daryl Middleton hurts because he is six foot seven, 305 pounds, and has has a lot of playing experience at the SEC power five level. That that is big. Six foot seven, 305 pounds. You can't teach that. They're just not growing those guys on trees. And even in a short stint at West Virginia, he was able to make an impact, getting a sack, getting some tackles for loss in only three games in 2021 for the Mountaineers. Now, JSU, they need all the help that they can get on the defensive line because we talked about ad nauseum. They lost Antoine Owen, you know, second in the team in tackles for loss and in sacks. They lost the tackles for loss and sacks leader from last year in a fifth round draft or sixth round draft pick, James Houston, who is now with the Detroit Lions. They need help. You know what I mean? Like they need, and there's a bunch of guys that they brought in, the Antonio Doyles, the the, the big countries from Florida State. And so they bring brought in a bunch of guys. And the more talented guys that you bring in, the better chance you have of one of them hitting, right? The more guys that you bring in, the better chance you have of one of those guys becoming a real star. I'm not predicting that anybody is going to become uh, is going to become James Houston because that's just tough. That'd be that'd be asking a lot for somebody to come in and get, you know, 14 and a half sacks, all those tackles for loss. That'd be hard for one dude to come in and make that kind of impact. But you can do it by committee. Your defense can be even better than last year. When you add a Travis Hunter, when you get Nugget for another year, and you add guys on the defensive line, you get a Aubrey Miller surprisingly coming back. Right, you can be better. You lo you lost to Keontae and Antoine Owen and and James Houston, of course. But this JSU defense can actually be better. Like it's gonna be tough. It's not gonna be easy, but it has a possibility just with the level of talent that is there. They're, the talent's there. It's whether those guys are able to go out there and execute. Now, here's the thing. Statistically, it might not look better. It's gonna be hard to be better statistically, especially with the style of offense that they're hoping to run they're hoping to run a form of air raid they're hoping to run a bunch of plays and when you do have a bunch of plays you could quickly have three and outs or you could score quickly therefore that could have your defense on the field more than they were last year so the stats might not show it and obviously that's way down the line <clears throat> we're only in june we're not you know we're talking football in june when games aren't going to be played till september but still adding a daryl middleton six foot seven Six foot seven, 305 pounds to an already to a defensive line that already has a bunch of talented guys. Now, unproven, don't, don't get it twisted. They're unproven, except for like Katron Evans and some of the guys that are coming back from last year, but they are talented, like vastly talented. We'll see what they'll be able to do. But I love this addition of Daryl uh, Middleton. Like I said, for the two reasons the fact that you're able to take him away from Alabama AM. That, hurt, that hurts one of your SWAC competitions. That hurts one of your rivals. That hurts a team that's going to be fighting to you know rebound. You know, Connell Maynard, he's he not just going to sit around and, and be mediocre, be average. You know what I mean? Like, he's, he's going to come back with a better team, a team that has, like, 30-plus transfers, right? 
and to take and to be able to snag him away from your team and not only take him away from them, but add him to your defensive line. I think it's big. I think Coach Prime knows what he's doing. The, the game is won and lost in the trenches. JSU lost Celebration Bowl because of the trenches play. South Carolina State had Jablonski Green and number 43. His name escapes me, escapes me for a second. They just wreaked havoc all over the JSU O line. They went and upgraded the offensive line, and now they're trying to upgrade that defensive line. We'll see if they're able to do it. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Once again, my name is Jeff Lightsey Jr. with the Black Boss Channel with Victory Formation. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for tuning in. You can subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and also you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at JLIT7, on Twitter and Instagram at JLIT7. We have some really, really dope interviews coming on the way. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Peace.